Hello everyone. Welcome to a very short and hopefully helpful video about how to take the NAC OSCE. This video is coming to you from Tudor IMG and uh, this is our effort in helping our immigrant doctor community towards um, improving their uh, NAC OSCE scores. Now some of you might already be aware that we also offer courses for the same um, purpose and um, if you do want to uh, join our course, you can always visit our website, www.tutorimg.ca. And um, the NAC is basically one of the main exams you have to give before you can apply for the Canadian Residency Program. Now, currently, because we have the whole coronavirus pandemic situation going on, there are a few changes that have been made to the NAC OSCE. Um, exam sequence. Now, the changes, of course, concern um, all of us who are preparing to give the NAC, and um, this is a short video that's going to let you know what those changes are. Now, as you know, before we used to have NAC OSCE based on about 12 stations, out of which two would be pilot stations. This, however, has changed in the current scenario. There are now no useless extra pilot situations. There are just 10 useful stations where you will be marked on your performance. Your identification um, uh, tags, which used to be stickers basically that you would offer the examiner at every station, that too has changed and you will now be required to call out your candidate number. Um, so that's something you should be practicing as well. Now, the marking system has changed to a non-numerical format. You should not be touching your SPs, which now, of course, means that physical examinations are going to become verbalized. What that means is that you should know quite a bit about um, the process of the physical examination, the procedures which are going to be pertinent to a particular physical exam, and the findings that would be positive in a particular high yield case. Because during the course of your verbalization, the examiner might actually interrupt you and ask you, what do you expect to find? And then that would require you, of course, to give them um, positive findings um, which are going to be pertaining to your case. So um, now, since the scoring is not going to be numerical, was it? What will it be like? It's going to be a pass fail or a pass with superior performance. And of course, I don't need to stress that when you are giving the exam, your aim should be pass with superior performance, because that kind of uh, result will ensure that once the not goes back to its original form of numerical grading, um, this particular phrase that you pass with superior performance will mean that you have a good standing uh, when compared to somebody who has a 90 or a 90 plus on their NAC. Now, what about the physician, physician examiner there? The examiner, um, is pretty much going to be doing the same thing, except now they're going to be interrupting you a bit more than usual. And that for any um, normal person would sound more daunting. However, uh, the best way to practice this is to have your study partner, um, you know, interact with you the same way a physician examiner would and bark orders at you in the middle of your practice session, right? So have your study partner interrupt you and give them those prompts as to, you know, what kind of finding are you expecting in this case? And they should be doing that at least three to four times during your phys physical examination verbalization practice. So your need to interact with them is just going to be about giving them your candidate code. Beyond that, they won't interfere unless you are doing something terribly wrong, um, which is a good thing. That's never a bad thing because they do want you to score. So if they have stopped you from doing something and they're redirecting you, remember 
you haven't lost the station yet. You can still salvage it. You can actually even score well on it if you go back into your stride and don't let that upset you. If you're being unsafe as per the protocols of the current pandemic, then of course they would stop you. If a station requires that tests should be done as a basic protocol in a case, then they will give you these, but of course you need to ask for them. So please do not forget to say, I would need a fresh set of vitals or that if there's an ECG, I would like to see it. So, um, on the other hand, although this is a very good practice to have, if the examiner does not hand you anything, you don't have to stop or look lost. Please proceed as if nothing was amiss. The examiner will, of course, as I mentioned before, interrupt you in the process of your verbalization of the physical exam to keep giving you positive findings. Like for example, if you're auscultating the chest and you're saying, I'm listening for um, any added breath sounds at the base of the lungs, they might add that there are added breath sounds and there are crepitations or um, any kind of uh, finding that could then uh, help you diagnose fluid in the lungs or even if there's consolidation, they'd give you findings and you could then diagnose pneumonia. About your SP. Now the SPs, it's pretty much the same thing as before. They will be giving you positive responses when you are on the right track. If you are getting a very negative history, or if you find that the SP has become very um, uncommunicative, then that is um, kind of like a clue that you're not on the right track with your line of questioning. And you should change your line of questioning, maybe regroup, take a few seconds, look at the case again, look at any notes you've made, and um, in the meantime, while you're collecting your thoughts, please don't uh, go into a prolonged state of silence. Um, say something like, okay, just to recap, um, you said that you have this and you have that and that you're in for this. So just recap. And that will help you in the meantime to collect your thoughts and get focused again. So the reason why you still have to be very attentive towards the SP is, of course, because the SPs are going to be asked for their feedback about you at the end of your case. What does verbalization in the physical examination mean? Do you have to verbalize the anatomical landmarks wherever you're placing your stethoscope? Uh, no. No verbalization is needed for anatomical landmarks of where you're going to be looking for an apex beat, for example, or where you're going to be looking or placing your steth for um, you know, the aortic area or the pulmonary area. So anatomical descriptions are not required. However, what is needed is that you at least mention that you are going to be listening for murmurs and added breath sounds, uh, added heart sounds over the aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral areas. Just saying that is enough. You do not have to go into um, you know, a, a monotonous description about where the aortic area is or where the pulmonic area is. Um, you will not have to practice or describe a maneuver. For example, when you have a shoulder exam and you have all those various tests like Job's maneuver and um, liftoff test, you don't have to go into detail about this is how I'm going to instruct the patient to keep their arm. No, you can just talk about or mention the name of the maneuver and um, the examiner will ask you what are you expecting and you can give them the finding. So what this has added to your prep is the fact that you need to be very aware of the positive findings and the most important aspects of the physical exam, which are going to make or break your case. If you do mention the maneuver, brilliant. If you don't mention the maneuver, the examiner will not be able to prompt you with what are you expecting to find? And then of course, you won't be able to present an answer, which means you're losing quite a bit of your case. So um, these are the main changes that you, you can um, expect on your NAC if you're giving it in the coming weeks. Um, all the best from our Tutor IMG team. And um, 
you can always reach us through our email, through our phone numbers listed on the website. If you need any help at the last moment, we are more than happy and willing to help you out. Thank you very much and please subscribe to uh, make sure that you don't miss any of our valuable videos.